Hi everyone, this is Shadow 3 bringing you a first person video of Akron. This is going to be me versus X Tan and Trillion Eyes, and from the forums. I, I imagine you probably don't know them, but it doesn't matter. And I'm going to be playing Grekum. So, as you may have seen my Grekum tutorial video, the Grekum will be reproducing by per generation, and that's about it. I can build one unit from the Arcticus, but after that, it doesn't really become economical, so I might as well not. And, for goodness sakes. Anyway, I'm going to have to go back. See, one nice thing about Akron is that you can actually go back and redo things in case the units screw up and don't properly pause the game. In case the units screw up and then just get everything working properly without having to waste any time. Because honestly, everyone's going to be doing this, so. Everyone's going to be doing this, so. I'm sorry, the frame is a little low, so I'm having a bit of trouble controlling certain things, but otherwise, it's not a big problem. So, yeah. This is Akron. And. This is the first first-person video I've done of Akron with actual commentary on multiplayer, so I'm a bit... I mean, I have a bit of a harder time. I'm sorry, it's actually the first first-person video I've ever done, period. I did some videos for StarCraft 2, but those were all replays due to some technical constraints, so I wasn't able to actually show my play of the game. With Akron, however, I seem to be able to get it to work fine while playing, so it shouldn't be a problem for actually showing off the game. The only downside is that while I'm playing, I'm going to be a bit distracting and playing, so it's going to be a bit difficult for me to really show off the game and show off my play as best as I could because I am doing it live and I am actually playing while I'm doing it, so I'm afraid I'm going to have a bit of a harder time really showing it off. So yeah, what I'm doing, I'm basically just trying to make an optimal start by continuously going back in time whenever necessary and control actually go all the time. I was fast forwarding before to go through it faster, but it might be screwing up a bit. Anyway, so what I can do is basically go back and redo anything that happens, allowing me to avoid any mistakes that occurred and to redo things that I don't fall behind my opponents too much. Now, admittedly, that may sound like kind of cheating compared to other RTS games because other RTS games you can't do that, and so you're bound by time and you really have no way of getting around that. The only thing is, if you have... I'm sorry, I... The Sorry. The thing is, though, is that when you have this and all your opponents have it as well, it's not such a luxury as it is more a necessity. You end up having to actually build things in back in time. You have to make sure you aren't making these mistakes, and sometimes you can act well later in the game. You can actually send units back in time. It's really awesome. So don't think of it too much as a bit of a cheap way out of sort of get out of jail free card when it comes to making mistakes, because if you make mistakes, you only have a limited amount of time to correct them, and even if you do correct them, your opponent can still screw you up without you knowing. So you have to be really careful to make sure that you aren't getting screwed over by your opponent. Because if you are, well, then you have to undo that, and then they have, they have a bit of an advantage on you, because now they have stuff that they can do while they're just going on on their own, and they, you don't have to worry about that, but you have to worry about the stuff they've done to you. And they don't care, because they've done it, and at the very least, they've wasted your time and attention. So attention becomes a very important resource in this game. It's not just something you can just throw in there and... I mean, admittedly, most RTS games' attention is an important resource, but in this case, you can't just assume that everything's going to work out immediately. And in this case, I'm being attacked in the future. Now I have to make, bear in mind that I'm going to be attacked, but I did have some units that I built recently for anti-air, which are going to be becoming relevant. You see these waves going along the timeline, these time waves, they're colored in this case, they propagate anything that happens, so whenever I change things, whenever I make units, whenever I give orders, when a time wave grabs it, it propagates it to the timeline, and I do this as well, but I can't do it as quickly. Time waves move about 2.4 times the speed of time. Players can move at most twice the speed of time. So I have some limitations when it comes to how much I can actually do this, but it still works out fairly well when it comes to being effective. Like I said, I'm sorry, it's, I'm bit tongue-tied because, like I said, I'm trying to play and talk at the same time. Anyway, yeah, so it becomes effective nonetheless because you can still avoid issues in the future, but you do have to make sure that any orders that you are sending... Oh crap, I'm being attacked. Sorry. Uh, as you can see, the player wave is coming behind me. His So what his changes are doing are propagating to the future through him, which means that if he's done anything like attacking me earlier, then it's going to be a bigger problem for me to deal with. So yeah, as I was saying, if something happens in the past, these time waves propagate it, they're essentially playing the game independently. And when they do that... Oh dear. Yeah, see what I mean? He's attacking me sooner. So, yeah, when they do that, he's attacking me here. It was on the red time wave. 
and then the attack came in sooner. So I actually have to worry about it from something that already happened. See what I mean? Players can actually come back in time and screw you over well in the past, and you have to be able to deal with it. And it actually costs this Chrono Energy resource at the top, it costs that Chrono Energy to have any of these orders be issued. So it's not free. You can't just throw it out there and hope for the best. You actually have to make sure that you aren't completely being careless, because otherwise you will run out of Chrono Energy. You will be frantically trying to make sure that you're not losing all your units to a rush, because those rushes are going to be de just devastating. And, oh shoot, I think I've got it. Oh yeah, there's a Lancer. This is a Lancer, a Cecil Lancer. It's a basic anti-ground flying unit. It's quite powerful, and I think I'm going to have to actually afford sending my Octo, this, this unit down here. Actually, come to think of it, that's a bad idea to begin with. He can't go... Why don't I send him? Oh shoot, did I not send him for? I'll just make sure this slingshot never sends any units. Okay, I'm sorry, I just undid an order. I should probably explain that. I just undid an order that I had sent previously because I can't actually make use of it. Now I'm just going to get this guy to build a building that I need to build air units because with air units I can actually start building up proper defenses and also proper attack forces because I can't actually, on this particular map, I cannot send land units up is an island map. I actually have to teleport up, or in the case of Grekum, fly up. Grekum lacks teleporters. They do have a, they do have a cheaper transport unit. But that's fairly late in the game. Unfortunately, this this game does not have very early game transport units, so it's a bit trickier to actually set up. Okay, warming attack. It's a bit trickier to actually set up a. I apologize. It's a bit trickier to actually set up an attack because. When you don't have teleporters, you can't get onto these islands, so Grekum is actually at a bit of a disadvantage, but I figured I'd just showcase this race anyway because I had shown them off in a tutorial video earlier. And as you can see, I've actually run out of Chrono Energy now, so I've got to be more careful when it comes to orders. I can go into the future and issue more orders there, but... Oh dear. I can go into the issue order... Sorry, I can issue more orders in the future, but I have to be careful because those orders... I have to make sure that they're not being done too carelessly, otherwise... I'm going to run out of corner energy still and not be able to affect the past. And the thing is, the past is what really matters, because if something happens in the past, then I need to be able to deal with it when it happens. I can't just hope for the best. Oh, shoot. I better... Sorry. I, I've got to be able to get the Chrono Quarter soon, or be able to Chrono Quarter soon. I need to get some Octos in the past and get some Domes. Sorry, those are the basic defensive structures. I uh, Yeah, these guys can build defenses, but I'm going to have to do it in the past. I can't do it in the present, I'm afraid. Or rather, in the... I can't do it with what I have back there. I have to do it with units I'm going to be getting and then sending back into the past to build defenses and just to generally exist. So, I apologize, it's not going to be super exciting at this point because I'm basically just hoping for the best in terms of what I can get. And I think something's eating up my CPU time. So, the frame rate, I'm afraid, is very low right now. I apologize for this. Okay, let's come back up. So, yeah, I'm going to be sending some units back in time pretty soon as soon as I can, and here we go. Okay, so I'm just going to send... You can actually send units back in time, having them perform for... What the? No active ma... Oh, great. I apologize. I'm going to have to do something even more daring. I uh, guess I'll have to create an active mound here. Sorry, I have to do a bit of a trick here. I have to actually create a mound, send something into the past, and then use it to create a mound in the past. This is a mound. It's a basic command structure for the Grecum. It allows them to chronoport and it also allows them to... Oh dear, I hope I didn't lost anything horribly bad. It allows them to chronoport and it allows them to also have a better vision radius. Well, it has a big vision radius around it. It allows them to do certain things like auto hierarchy and... Hierarchy is something that comes up. If you notice, there's lines that are extending from these units to these buildings over here. What happens there is the buildings, or in most cases, other units, but Grekum doesn't have that, can command sets of units, so you command armies with a single unit instead of having a bunch of units. The only problem is that when you're doing that, you have you have to make sure that you are doing it in such a way that you... Okay, now I can actually send stuff in the past. So yeah, I'm just going to send this into the past, and then have him build a mound back in the past. So I'll be building a mound a few minutes ago, and so from here I'll be able to send some units back in time. So it'll be a bit of a 
like basically a bit of a stable time loop here, as far as anything goes. So, I mean, as it is, I wasn't actually too badly damaged by that attack, it turns out, but it's still problematic, and I still need to make sure that I'm not letting it get me. Oh, I'm sorry, the frame rate seems to have really dropped horribly. I'm gonna have to look into that. Yeah, anyway, so at this point, I'm still gonna be able... I think I'll be able to send the teams back in time, I'm not sure. I can't remember when I actually set the original Chrono Port. The idea is that when you send orders, if they don't work, you can still send them. They won't get cancelled, they'll just not... they'll basically... they'll get cancelled the first time around, but if something allows them to happen, they will not be cancelled, and I think I just... Oh shit. I think I just lost the ability to do that Chrono Port I just did. Okay, what happened? I'm sorry, I... I, I did a Chrono Port to the past. I sent a unit back